reaction might I want from her? And what kind of reaction are they hoping from you? When they say something to you, when they do something to you, what are they hoping? Fear. Fear. Okay, what else are they hoping? Just fear? It's not just fear, there's two, there's one. There's two things that they like to do. They like fear, they also like anger. When you get angry at them, they're like, oh, that was easy, look at that. That emotional response, that's what they're hoping for. That emotional response, be it sad, fear, or anger. They like those, okay, and they feed off of those, all right? Now, there are four different ways that somebody can pick on us. There's four, what we call four different types of bullying. Okay, I know you guys know them, so give me one. Uh, cyberbully? Yeah, cyberbully, right? That's somebody who uses a computer, internet, and text messaging. Anything to do with technology, okay, to bug you, using their words, pictures, any of that type of stuff, that is cyberbully. Okay, another one. Verbal bullying. Verbal bullying. Somebody uses their words to hurt us, calls us names, says things to us, uh, you know, um, laughs at us, all that type of stuff. Anything to do with verbally using their words to hurt me. Then we have? Physical, that's easy, right? Kicks, punches, pushes, okay? Um, even takes your stuff, breaks your stuff. It can do with physically hurting you or damaging your property, okay? There's one other one. Yeah? Emotional. Emotional? What do you mean by emotional? Like psychological. Okay, what would they do? Uh, that's less physical. It's more like getting into your head, like um, name calling and playing games with you and stuff like that. You're very close. So name calling, would be would be a verbal bully. Okay? So you're very you're very close. Think of it this way. This person uses their words as well. Okay? They don't just tell me they don't like me. They tell other people. Isolation. Yeah, isolation, rumors, gossip, exclusion. That's what we call a social bully. Okay, somebody who socially bullies us. Okay, very common um, amongst teenage girls. Okay. Um, so we have verbal, physical, social, okay, and cyberbullying. What is the most common type of bully? What do you guys think is the out of those four? What do you think is the number one, the one that from kindergarten all the way up to adults? Because even adults, we deal with this stuff. Okay, it doesn't go away. It doesn't magically, once you graduate university, it's gone. It doesn't happen. Okay? Which one do you think is the most common type of bully? for all age levels to, that they deal with? Emotional. The social one or? The social one? Mm, it's not the social one. Would it be verbal? It is the verbal one, okay? And the reason that this is the most common type of bully, the reason this is the most common type of bully is because a bully wants to test the waters first. They want to see what kind of person you are, how you're going to respond, how you're going to react. So they start off small, right? What are you looking at? What's your problem? Get out of my way. Call you a name. Say something that's hurtful, rude, intimidating. They want to see how you're going to respond. And that first response is key, because that's going to determine what happens next. Maybe they get more aggressive with their words. Maybe they add a shove so they get physical with it. Maybe they get their friends involved and exclude you from things. You know, don't sit with her. If you want to be my friend, don't hang out with her. You sit with me. If you talk to her, you can't talk to me anymore. Okay, so they get their friends involved, or maybe go through social media and cyberbully. But generally, it's going to start off with something small. How do you respond to this person? Okay? So, there's a three-step process that we teach at grade. Okay? And the three-step process is, first step is walk away. Hardest step that you'll ever have to do in your life. You say nothing. You walk away. The reason you don't say anything, first of all, um, is because if this person is intimidating you, and it's okay, we all get intimidated, you all get nervous, I still do as well, okay? When you try to speak and you're nervous, sometimes your words don't come out right. And now this person's just gonna make fun of you even more, okay? Sometimes, me, you're that person that somebody says something to you and you get angry. And then you yell, you scream at this person. Then they know they got what they wanted. They want you to get upset, they want you to get emotional, you gave it to them. So your first step is to walk away. Second step is what we call talk away. You use your words. You've had some time to think what you're going to say to this person. You 
you're going to use your words to them. You want to make sure it's to the point. You don't want to have a whole conversation with them about what they're doing and that, how it's not right. You know, they really shouldn't pick on you and all this type of stuff. It's to the point. 80% of what we say is done through our bodies. 80%. That's a big chunk. So we need to make sure that when I say something to this person, that my body language is showing I'm strong. My eyes, eye contact to this person, my shoulders back, my head up. Standing strong. Your tone of voice, 13% of what you say is actually your tone of voice. Your tone of voice has to be serious. You can't be stop when you're low. I don't like when you do this. No, that's not strong. It has to be strong without yelling at the person. Look, I don't have time for this. Back off. Leave me alone. Okay, whatever you kind of find works. Okay, I like, I don't have time for this. I don't. I have better things to do and deal with this stuff. Okay, well that's enough. Third step. This third step gets other people involved, which is a big thing we're going to talk about tonight. Third step, if you feel that this you can't do this on your own, okay, and you need some outside help, which is our third person we're going to deal with in a second, you're going to bring your hands up. Palms face out. Okay, open. Never close, because when I do this, it looks like I want to fight. And again, 80% of what I say is done through my body. So my words might be saying, stop, leave me alone. This person just sees my hands and goes, oh, look, she wants to fight. My hands are open, palm out. Okay? It shows you guys that are witnessing this, that I'm telling this person, leave me alone. And then you guys have a responsibility. Okay? So you raise your voice in step three. So those are our three-step process that we have. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is you guys are going to just, just, you're going to get up, you're going to move on. Hopefully you guys know each other. If you don't, that's okay. Get to know each other. Okay? You're going to try this three-step process for two minutes just so you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay? One person's going to say, what are you looking at? You walk away from them. Make eye contact, walk away. Okay? The person follows you and says, hey, I'm talking to you. Do your second step. Talk away. Make eye contact. Tell them to leave you alone. Back off. Whatever kind of works. Okay? Then they're going to follow you again. You're going to do your third step. Your hands come out. Palm faces them. Don't touch. They're not touching you. Don't touch them. Hands are here. I said, stop. I said, that's enough. Whatever you guys want to say, but your voice has to be raised. You guys got this? Okay. Let's try this, because then we're going to talk about that third person, the bystander, and your role if, as that person. Okay, so find yourself a partner and try that. Out. Okay, go. Yeah, make sure you guys are switching rules, right? So each person gets a chance to try it. Yeah, is that good? You guys got partners?
What's the difference? It's a slight thing, but you can see you can see that you read my body language totally different. Kind of like you're more scared. Yeah, I'm backing away from this person, right? Okay. Instead of standing in my spot or slightly stepping, as long as you don't touch, you have to know your distance for that one. Okay. But I'm here. I'm strong. Okay. Um. Other one was raising our voice. When you raise our voice, we could walk away. Okay, so we want to make sure we raise our voice. Just that little bit more so other people, right? You want to cause that attention. Go, whoa, what's going on? Oh, she's in trouble. Look at that. I heard her say stop. And her hands are up. That must mean she's in trouble. Right? And versus somebody went stop and her hands are here and I don't hear her. I need to get that attention first. Okay? So that third person that we, um, that witnesses this happening is called the bystander, right? A bystander is somebody who witnesses a bullying situation. As a bystander, we have three choices, and those are our three choices. There's only three. What are they? So you witness something happening. You see somebody getting bullied. Okay, you, see, you hear somebody getting called a name or pushed around, whatever it is. What are your three choices? Do nothing. Do nothing. That's a choice. It's not a correct choice, but it is a choice that people make. They do nothing. I don't want to get involved, because if I get involved, this person's coming after me, so forget it's your problem, not mine. You can step in and tell them to back off. Okay, so you can um, help the target by saying something, okay, by doing something. We're going to talk about different options you can do to help the target, okay? And what is that other step? What is that other, yeah? You can stand by and watch it. Okay, so you can stand by and watch, even encourage, right, to help you fully. Laugh, giggle when somebody says something about another person. Okay, by simply giggling and laughing, you're giving that person the, um, the, the feedback that they want. Oh, look, I'm funny. When there's 100 people witnessing a situation, that means if there's 100 of us witnessing a situation, we only take 1% of that responsibility. If nobody else is doing anything, why, why, why am I going to do anything? Nobody else is standing up, so I guess I don't. I guess it's acceptable. I don't have to stand up. But if we see the opposite way, that it is our responsibility to do something, and it is our responsibility to do something, to change this behavior of this person, to make sure that this negative behavior is not going to continue and harm this person, then we have to do something. We have to stand up. Okay, we have to take 100 response, 100 percent responsibility for our school, for our community. If you see something happening, you are responsible. Okay, so that's that's the bystander effect. There are choices to make. If I see something happening, so if I see something happening and I'm like, hey, I'm going to do something here. I don't just have to feel like I have to say something to the bully. There's other options, okay? Uh, most of you guys are in high school still, right? Okay, so we know safety in numbers. We know that. So you see the kid that sits at lunch by themselves every day. You see them always walk by and push them or do something to them. So instead of walking by that person and saying nothing, why don't you say, hey, why don't you come sit with us instead of lunch? Come on over here. Invite them to hang out with you. That's a big step. It's a bold step to make. You're showing everybody that, hey, hey, this person has friends. And sometimes that's all that takes. Okay? Um, you can also do what we call a distraction technique. So I see something happening. Okay, and I see this person is not strong enough to stand up for themselves and is not being able to disengage from this situation like I just taught you. But you still don't want to say anything to that bully because, uh, you know what, I'm not there yet. Okay, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that yet. There's other things you can do. You can do what we call a distraction technique. There you are, I've been looking for you. I need you to grab that book from your, from your locker for me. Let's go. I didn't say anything to the bully. I don't even know what's going on but I'm getting her out of there. It's a distraction technique. Okay, so there's different ways besides thinking that you always have to go, hey, stop. 
If you're not comfortable with doing that, because that's, that's very hard to do, there's other ways that we can help and encourage this person. Okay? Voice your support. This is one of the biggest things that, um, that we have to teach other people to do. Voice your support by getting somebody else that can maybe help you out, especially if it's physical. If it's physical, you need to get somebody else to get involved. You're not going to jump in there. I don't expect you to do that, and I, I, I hope you don't do that, okay, just for safety, okay? But you go you go get somebody to help you guys out, you know? there's If it's not happening at school, there's police officers, there's lots of other things that you guys can do, okay? You can voice your support by saying, hey, I saw what happened. Are you okay? Do you need to talk? Just making somebody feel like they belong is huge. Let them know that, yeah, I saw what happened. I do care. Do you need to talk? Do you need somebody to listen? And that's, that's huge. Because a lot of the times these targets, these people that are um, targeted by these bullies feel like nobody is watching. Nobody sees what's going on, or they see and nobody cares. You have to let them know, yeah, I, I do care. I do respect you, and I want to hear your story. Are you okay? By you simply saying, are you okay, can change somebody's life. Totally. Making them feel from, nobody cares, I don't... Why am I doing this? Why am I here? To, oh look, somebody, somebody does care. Somebody does want to listen to me. Okay, and that, those, are, those are different steps that you guys can take as, as a bystander. Are there any questions on any of this stuff? Does anybody have any comments? Any, anything you guys want to add to it? Anything that you've felt um, happening or anything like that? I'm open to any discussions or anything like that. No? So, it starts with us. Gandhi said it best. Okay? And Crone uh, said it in her speech be the change that you want to see in the world. It starts with us. It starts with you. And that carries through to other people. So if you, if you want people to demonstrate the qualities of being a proper bystander, you want people to um, show respect for the other ch other people, then you have to start it first. And then hopefully people follow your suit. People see that, yeah, she's a leader. I want to follow her. Okay? Secondly with it is letting people know that this type of behavior is not going to be accepted in our community. I'm not accepting this type of behavior in my school. And the way that it's accepted is by people, again, not saying anything, because then they're like, okay, well, I guess it's okay for me to do this, because I'm not being told it's not okay. And people encouraging, again, by the simple laughing and joking and stuff like that, people go, oh, okay, look, it's okay for me to do this, because people think it's funny. I'm being awarded for my behavior. But you have to let these people know that this behavior is not going to continue here. We're not accepting it. We're not giving this behavior the, the um, breeding ground that it needs, right? You're not allowing it to breed where you want in your school, in your community. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? Okay. So what I want you guys to do is this, okay? You're going to do the walk away, you're going to do the talk away, you're going to do the block away. So you're going to get in groups of three this time, okay? So walk, talk, and walk. So one person's the bully, one person's the target. I'm going to go bystander. So now the person does this, the block away. The bystander, I want you to jump in. You can do whatever you want. You can tell this bully, hey, look, she said leave her alone, leave her alone. Or you can say, hey, there you are, I've been looking for you, let's go. You're supposed to meet us for lunch. Do a distraction technique, okay? You can just uh, say, hey, you're okay, so what happened? But I want you to do something instead of doing nothing. And the reason we practice these steps is so that they become natural, right? If 
I don't practice these steps, then I'm never going to use them. I need to make sure that I know what I'm doing. So in this, in this uh, form, we have a safe um, practice ground for you guys to work with. We look at, you know, music and music videos. Um, how do they portray women is a big one, right? Um, usually women are talked down to music and are just, um, you know, sex symbols, right? And that's, uh, but we know we're much more than that, right? But then, then you have people that play on that, right? Um, then there's, you know, the aggression towards other people the, through movies and, and the violence and stuff like that on TV. That's why, um, you know, having, you know, uh, I don't want to say censorship on, on some stuff because that's probably not the right, uh, the right thing, but I don't think kids should be watching, like a four-year-old should be watching much music to me. That's just, it, that's, that shouldn't be happening. Um, but there definitely should be some, some parental boundaries and stuff when it comes to that stuff. The media does, even, even in um, uh, the news, right? As soon as you hear about a bullying report, it's all over the place, which is great because now we know it's it's really brought the whole bullying situation. Because when I was growing up, it, you know, it was like you really didn't talk about bullying; it kind of just happened, right? You didn't really say anything, and that's not long ago. When I was your when I was your age, you're talking only like 15 years ago. It's not that long ago, okay? But we, you didn't really talk about bullying; it just kind of happened. But everybody's talking about it now. And it's kind of really brought it into, into light. Um, so the media has a, a positive side in the sense that it's brought it to light. It does have a negative side that um, some of the stuff that people are viewing as okay, ways of treating people uh, through music lyrics or videos or any of that type of stuff, some of it could be negative, okay? Um, so it has, its, it has its pros and cons. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it it's brought bullying to an amazing light, and you know we got these kinds of groups that are talking about it and doing something about it because they don't because before everybody never talked about it. It happened to me, it happened to you, it happened to you, but we never really you know talked about it. Now it's like it happened to me, and then you're like really because it happened to me too, and then now you've got these groups going yeah it, it, that happened to me as well. Um, so that sense the media has been awesome. Has brought um, has brought that whole uh, bullying incidents and stuff aware awareness to not just to the youth and kids and making them feel that they're not alone anymore, but it also has brought it to um, the the light of government, schools, uh, counselors has brought you know so now everybody's paying attention to it, so it's it's kind of got a magnifying glass on it. Okay, so it's, it's, in that sense, it's really good. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, so I actually have two questions. My first one is, um, is there any type of program that, because we've been talking more about the target, yeah. right? So is there any kind of program that would counsel the bully, like the bully uh, center? Because there's all kinds of programs that are target-based, right? Um, so is there something that is aimed towards the bully and, you know, kind of a, getting to the root of the issue instead of, you know, starting at the different branches. No, and I'm glad you brought that up because, um, like, like I keep on saying, bullying is behavior. It's not, it's not the person, like, a person can change. It is a behavior. Um, so there are different things that um, people can, can do to change their behavior, right? Um, Working, I find uh, you know anything to do with having empathy. So working with uh, elderly or working with kids, you have to have empathy to work with with those two, yeah. right? Um, you know, I come from a martial arts background. So martial arts, to me, does a big role with it because it's character development um, and it teaches it teaches um, uh, to be confident in themselves and uh, to. Uh, follow rules and stuff like that and to, to work well with each other when you work with a partner. Um, so that type of stuff. Anything to do with uh, confidence building as well. So playing an instrument, um, getting involved in community activities, uh, and 
becoming part of a group, uh, those things will definitely help. Very similar to the stuff that you would do with a target hmm. to build confidence. You're doing the same type of thing with the bullies, building that confidence and letting them know this is the behavior that's that again is acceptable in our community. And this is what this is how this is how we're gonna uh, change our behavior. Okay, so um, but anything to do with empathy, uh, confidence building, uh, character development uh, would definitely be programs that uh, would be very useful, useful for somebody who is looking to change their behavior. But again, it's something they have to want to do, right? It's something that you have to want to do. Any other questions? You guys have some excellent questions. You have another one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so. What would you say to somebody who asks you, like, where do you draw the line? What is bullying and what is not? Like, is if me and my, like, if my friend and I are walking and, uh, you know, as a joke or something, you know, she pushes me, but I don't quite like it, is that considered bullying? Or so there's a difference where, between teasing and taunting, right? Right? Teasing and taunting. Teasing is something you do casually with your friends, right? We all tease our friends. We laugh at our friends. You say something to them, you know, you laugh, you joke. Taunting is when it's over and over and over again, right? If I tease my friend and I've hurt their feelings and I said something that maybe was over the line, it just it crossed the line. And sometimes I mean, we've all had it happen to us, okay? And I see in my friend's face that I cross the line, then I should be saying, you know what? Cross the line. I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to, to be taken that way. I didn't mean for it to go like that. But you apologize, okay? If it's done over and over again, um, or if they, they go, what are you, why are you upset? I just said all of this, you shouldn't be upset at me. You have every right to, to say, this is how I'm feeling. I am feeling upset. Right, and hopefully your friend can respect that. And then, you know, Conflict is normal in a relationship. Every relationship has conflict. Every relationship has conflict. Okay? Um, and that's how you build your relationships, right? You test your boundaries, you have all that, you know? Parents have, you probably have conflict with your parents all the time. You're testing your boundaries all the time. Okay? When you have kids, they're going to do the same thing to you. With your friends, you're, you're testing your, you know, you're, you're testing your boundaries with your friends as well. Um, and that's normal. That's a healthy relationship. To be able to say, hey, you know what? I don't like what was said. I don't appreciate what was said. And then, then it can be talked out and, and resolved. Resolve your conflict. Okay, I'm not saying that you guys should, you know, by all means, don't think that conflict and punching each other and all that type of stuff is normal. That's not normal, okay? But having disagreements and not agreeing on things and, um, you know, stay in your mind. That's normal. That's normal. Okay? When it's taken too far and it's um, where somebody just constantly is on, on you about something, then that's, that's a little bit different. Okay? But every relationship is going to have a little bit of conflict, even with your friends. Okay? You guys know that. Who's ever had a conflict with your friends before? Hello. Yeah, all of us, right? Okay, you probably have conflicts with your parents at least once a week, at least, okay? So, um, it's understanding that that's okay, and we're going to resolve it, and we're going to be okay after. But it's, again, when it's done for pleasure, and it's done to physically or emotionally hurt you, that's not okay. I think right now, the, the, the last couple things that have happened with the media have been females, but boys go through it just as much as we do. Just as much. Um, and in the same way. It used to, people used to think that boys were the only ones that got physically hurt, and the females were the only ones that got verbally hurt, or socially hurt. Nope. Girls get physically hurt just as much as boys do. Boys get socially and verbally hurt just as much as girls do. So it's no longer 
girls get bullied this way, boys get bullied this way. It never was. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, we have to stop thinking that a boy is only going to get bullied physically. So we don't have to worry about him having to stand up for himself this way. No. We have to worry about them just as much as we worry about us. Okay? Um, any other questions on that? Yeah? Um, for cyberbullying, how should a bystander contribute to that situation? Because usually for cyberbullying, it's, if it's there, it's there forever. So yes, yeah, that's a really important thing to know, right? It's World Wide Web, it's stuck there. You put something up on the web, it's there forever, right? You can't, it's gone, it's, it's there. Um, the cyberbully, if you're a bystander for the cyberbully, so let's say somebody sent you something about another person, okay? So somebody sent you a message, uh, be it a text message or an email, you know, like Facebook, something, whatever, you see it. You have a responsibility. Do not respond. Do not delete. Okay, this is deleting. You have proof that it's there, right? So keep it there. Um, but do not respond to it. Do not forward it. But then you have to be talking to somebody. You know, if it's your parents saying, hey, well, what do we do about this? It is considered a criminal offense. So you can definitely go to the police and say, like, this is what somebody else is posting. Especially if it's stuff that, what has been in the media. And again, it's that, if this was you, what would you want others to do for you? Would you want people to not say anything? Like, that's, that's crazy. Or would you want people to do something about it? And I know your answer, because we'd all want somebody to do. So, you, you have to do something, you have to, especially if it's in um, pictures of any sort or any of that type of stuff, you definitely need to be going to the police. Okay, you don't have to, you know, it's never gonna be said that you're the one that did this, right? If it's posted on the web, it could be hundreds of people that just brought it, right? It's not, it's not gonna be said that it's you that brought this to the light, but somebody should do this, okay? It's like if you hear of anything, um, you know, if you see somebody that writes posts that uh, they want to harm themselves, or they want to, you know, those are things that you have a responsibility to do. If somebody's going to get in trouble, or somebody's going to get hurt, you need to report it. If somebody's getting hurt, or going to get hurt, you need to report it. Okay? You need to report it. It's not snitching, it's not ratting, it's, it's reporting. And we have to get that. We have to. We have to let that sink in. If somebody's going to physically, emotionally get hurt, we need to report it. Any other questions? Any other questions? And we're going to have a session on cyberbullying specifically. Yes. Yeah, that is May 2nd. There you go. Make sure to grab one of these. Okay, because it has all your dates of what you guys are doing. Um, I think this, what you guys are doing here is awesome. Right? It starts with one person. It starts with one person. You guys take it back to your school, you take it back to your community, and then you talk about it, and it grows. And it spreads. It spreads like an ep epidemic. You're going to spread a healthy epidemic. You're going to let this, you know, this caring, nurturing, uh, inclusion vibe just carry through your school. Then it carries through your school, then it carries through your community. Okay, so um, the best thing. Now you have to take this information and you have to do something about it. You have to take what we've just been talking about and you have to do something about it. Because the worst thing that you can do is come here and then all of a sudden sit on the information that you had and do nothing about it. You have to take it and you have to do. You have to, you have to figure something out with your school, with your community, whatever it is. But you have to get involved. Okay? Um, if there's no one other questions, I is, is anybody have any other questions? No? I'm. Uh, thank you very much for having me come out here. It was. Uh, you know what? It was something that as soon as Chrome had, she gave me a call and she said, uh, "Do you think you can do this?" And I said, "It was a short notice, but uh, 
Um, <laughs> it's definitely a passion of mine, this, this, this topic. It's something that I'm very passionate about, something that I truly believe in. Um, so this is, I was so excited to work with, work with you guys and um, to share my, my input, my knowledge on what, on what bullying is and my standards. Um, so I hope that you guys are walking away with a little bit of information um, and uh, are able to do something about it. But I just want to give yourselves a big round of applause because you guys are awesome today.